Welcome back to the Sports Machine Auto Racing. Damon Hill captured the Canadian Grand Prix, and Jeff Gordon became the first NASCAR driver to earn a million dollars this year, capturing the Pocono 500. That's his fifth win of the year. You, know, you may recall a couple of years ago, we shared with you the story of Curtis Pride. He's the ball player born with a hearing impairment, left him 95% deaf. At the time, Curtis Pride was toiling in the minor leagues, but instead of, instead of feeling sorry for himself, he decided that no disability would deny him his dream of playing Major League Baseball. Now, with the encouragement of his father and support of his family, he's living that dream. Let me take you up to Baltimore. It's a typical summer afternoon at Baltimore's Inner Harbor, a haven for tourists. That's Detroit Tigers outfielder Curtis Pride, who on this day is among the visiting tourists. He enjoys the sights of the harbor, but not the sounds. For Curtis Pride is deaf. Batting second, the left fielder, number 36, Curtis Pride. The sounds of baseball, the crack of a bat, the umpire making a call, those sounds are foreign to Curtis Pride. Although he is deaf, he has reached his goal this year. He had always wanted to be a major league ball player. Against tremendous odds, he's become the Detroit Tigers starting left fielder. He's not only excelled at the plate and on the base paths, but in the field as well. He has truly become one of the best young players in baseball. To a lot of people, that's just a great accomplishment because they have never seen a deaf baseball player playing at the major league. And for me, it's not really much of an accomplishment because I've always considered myself as one of the guys. And I'm capable of doing anything as well, where you'd be better than most of the guys. Curtis Pride was born December 17, 1968 in Washington, D.C. He was born 95% deaf, but he learned to lip read. Thus, he went to mainstream schools and was taught by his parents that despite his handicap, anything is possible. In high school, he was a star in baseball, in basketball. He was a soccer standout. He was a naturally gifted athlete. He was offered over 200 college scholarships to play basketball. Wearing number 35, Curtis Pride went to William & Mary, where he became the team's leading point guard. But baseball was his first love. But for seven years, he languished in the Mets farm system. He had an uncertain future. Curtis Pride felt he would never realize his dream of being a big leaguer. In 1992, he talked it over with his parents. He decided maybe it was time to give up his dream of the big leagues. You know, I want to quit. I want to walk away from baseball. You know, I was having all kinds of problems. And I told my parents, look, um, I'm going to give it up. And my father said, no, you're not a quitter. I did raise my son to be a quitter. At that point, I had more faith in Kurt's potential than he did. And I still believed that he could make it. And I felt it was my job to convince him that he should believe that he could make it. September 17, 1993, less than a year after almost walking away from baseball, Curtis Pride is called up by the Expos in the middle of a pennant race. As a pinch hitter, he gets his first major league hit. It's an incredible experience. Curtis Pride with a two-run scoring double. Two-run score. The Expos go on to victory. What followed was most unexpected. The fans knew Curtis Pride was deaf. They knew he couldn't hear him, but they gave him a five-minute standing ovation. His coach told him to tip his hat. He couldn't hear the fans, but he felt the vibration in his chest. I barely heard the crowd, but I felt it because it was so loud. I could feel the uh, vibration. This is the best moment I would never forget. And I mean, I still think about it every once in a while. Because, um, it's probably the biggest uh, thrill of my entire based one career. This year, he made the Tigers as a non-roster player in spring training. Now he's their everyday left fielder. 
The fans love him, and he loves Major League Baseball. He is truly an inspiration to everyone seeking a dream. And he's just been named the 1996 Alexander Graham Bell Role Model of the Year. Looking back, well, I almost gave up baseball completely. And I'm glad my father, my parents taught me out of it. And now I'm back in the major league, playing every day. And, and I learned, one thing I learned from this experience is never quit, never give up. Because you never know if you keep working hard, if you keep fighting back, good things will happen. The lesson in all of this is never give up until you're completely defeated. As long as you have one inch of fight left in you, go ahead and go for it because you never know. You can always turn it around. Today, Curtis Bride is hitting 283. For the first time in his career, he has a job in security. And thanks to his father's encouragement and confidence, Curtis Pride is pursuing his dream.